It's so quiet. Kind of eerie. Gives me the creeps. Welcome to my Model Corner Project 31. We'll do something unusual in this one by building, painting, and detailing one of my favorite spaceships from science fiction, the Eagle Transporter from the television series Space 1999. Many builders have improved on this kit by making some structural modifications to the model as well as scratch building miniature interior sets, adding internal lighting, selecting the Polar Lights aftermarket metal engine nozzles kit, and some have even included a diorama to display their eagle. However, we will simplify this build down to just the basics, but we will make this vehicle somewhat of a used and aged spaceship that has seen its share of adventures over the years. As with the TV model, the kit is modular in its approach to constructing the sub-assemblies. I've organized the presentation of the construction painting and detailing in the order directed by the instructions with each spacecraft section taken up to the point just prior to the final assembly of the whole eagle. But your language is foreign to us. As with the aircraft models, we start with the forward cockpit, in this case the command module. I'm not an expert on the television show as when it originally aired it was sporadic on Chicago television so I didn't keep up interest, yet I always thought the Eagle was one of the best looking space vehicles I ever saw. The fit of the pieces is good and there is only one challenging area later which I'll bring up when we get there. To present the specific capabilities and dimensions of the Eagle, some research was done. However, there are varying specifications out there. One reason is because the live action sets and the Eagle models used in the show did not match up when equalized in scale. Therefore, I'm picking the information that seems the most practical. MPC has provided blackout decals for the four viewports. You could also leave the windows unpainted or paint them black as other options. Instead here, we will use some scrap automotive window tint pieces. Sure it'll work! No reason why it shouldn't! Is there? We'll go the black shading route to avoid a very stark white exterior. In addition, this will provide opportunities for effects of uneven lighting, shadows, lunar dust and grime, as well as wear and tear. I 
had believed that the airbrushing and construction was not going well here, and after it was painted white, this sat for six weeks still masked as I continued to work on other parts. When I finally unmasked the command module, I was pleasantly surprised that it only needed 15 minutes of touch-ups to continue, and not two days of reworking it. There are many pictures and videos available showing the command module from the series and these establish that the model contains a very good reproduction of the aft wall features. In this instance we painstakingly airbrush in each color rather than by means of my sloppy hand brushing. We'll dub this Eagle 4 as this number alternative will be explained later. The molds include two astronauts and although I'm not much of a figure painter, we'll have fun coloring and detailing them in even though it may end up looking like a child's finger painting attempt. With a little flexing, the back of the command module nicely pops into the main compartment. There is no consistency between eagles in the series as far as all the patterns displayed on the exterior. So, what you decide to choose can be quite different from what someone else picks. We can use weathering powders to fill in various panel markings which will reduce the amount of masking needed for airbrushing. It will also be easier to vary the contrast and create fading of these shapes as seen on the TV models. Adding some wash will bring out our panel details especially, and depending on the amount of cleanup, we can also lend a hand to the dirty look previously begun with the black shading. Rubbing perpendicularly to the panel lines helps build up the wash and highlights the molded detail. The decal selection is also variable, as again, no two eagles are completely alike in this respect. The moon base logo should be applied so that it is parallel with the ground, thus it will be a little askew in relation to the panel it rests on. Our final piece for this section is a frame that will assist in joining the command module with the rest of the transporter later on.
Some bands are much darker than others, so a few of the bands will be quickly hand painted throughout the ship as needed. Moving on, we come to the construction of the distinctive main supporting truss work. This went well together and it was an enjoyable experience putting together. Once again, we repeat the theme of initially black shading our sections. To save on extra painting tasks, masking tape strips were added to the superstructure where black bands are present for our adaptation of this eagle's look. After removing the black stripe masking, we can use a reference image to plan out the other colored banding for the beam work. As we did before, weathering powders and some small amounts of paint are added to recreate all the necessary markings. What's to stop us? Nothing, technically. Next we begin to tackle the supporting structures for the forward service module and the nearly identical engineering module for the aft portion of our spacecraft. In this clip, a bottom frame of one of the modules is under assembly. If you note closely, there is a notch in one of the center posts. This joins with the arm of a landing gear pod later on. However, in this shot, the keyed posts are attached upside down. Oh, no! These errors were subsequently corrected. Next, we have yet more support framework to build for later attachment to the module subassemblies. This additional effort pays off afterward as all of it comes together to make a unique and exquisite appearing arrangement.
Now onto what we can describe as power racks that provide electrical, life support, and recycling to their respective modules. As mentioned before, the service and engineering modules are an indistinguishable match. However, the service module will now become dissimilar as the docking collar that makes it to the command module is attached. These modular components feel very solid, almost as if one could stand on them and it would support the weight. For those familiar with television and motion picture science fiction models of the 1970s, you know that detail was often added to studio models by kit bashing where crafted parts are obtained from off-the-shelf plastic model sets rather than spending precious time and money custom manufacturing items. No doubt, some may recognize this area if you've seen or built World War II German tanks. This is a testament on how well those working for MPC carefully transferred these features to our kit from the actual TV models. I only understand a part of what you say. No gloss coat was added to the modules in order to recreate hard to reach lunar dust and grime. Layer upon layer, the module, the cage, the power racks, and then dry fitting the side reinforcement frames, we can take notice on how all the different equipment combines to make an interesting exterior look. Moving on to another important aspect of our Eagle model are the landing gear pods. Although we're over halfway through the video, this is actually where much of what you have seen and will see was tested out. The black shading, the effect on the white paint coat, the weathering powder usage for markings, the detail wash, and dirtying things up as well as the decal application can all be traced back to these four foundational pieces. For our transporter, a roadmap of sorts was created using insights from a few Eagle model sources prior to adding the panel markings and decals. All the markings that are present on the landing gear pods have no rhyme or reason between each other and usually don't match the same patterns and locations on other Eagles. Over time, as the models used in the series went through their paces, repainting and redressing the craft altered their original starting appearance, so there is that additional progression of inconsistencies. Thus, the model builder may have to choose between picking a particular moment in time from a screenshot if they can get all the angles, or take ideas from different sources and come up with their own general composition in detailing their eagle.
tonal contrast can be achieved by varying the pressure of our applicators and we can also use a soft pencil eraser to do additional subtle fading and also make corrections if necessary. The weathering powders adhere very well and are not weak, so too much pressure makes it more difficult to remove. A light gloss cut was added to the pods to enhance the capillary effect for the wash around raised panels to improve detail, shadowing, and give the model some scale. We have these maneuvering thruster assemblies which are a nice feature and reminded me very much of a similar array on the real life Apollo service and lunar modules. While we add our thrusters, we can sweep on some white weathering powder to simulate thruster gas residue as referenced from pictures seen on the television models. Once again, wash is added for detailing, but purposely the wipe down is less efficient to leave some of it on the pads to replicate the surface grunge that would get on top of the feet. Some leftover HVAC duct tape on the struts can provide a shiny surface instead of painting them. Household aluminum foil might have worked better in this case. The landing gear goes together pretty well, but an upgrade in this kit with metal aluminum struts would be helpful as these don't seem very strong. That sound. There's trouble ahead. In these clips, we attend to the most challenging section of the build, the framework for the nuclear reactors, fuel tanks, system lines, and the four main engine nozzles. It's not impossible, but it takes some care.
Incorporating the engine and the fuel system parts goes together in a straightforward manner. The parts mostly pop into place. We finally arrived to the biggest component of the model, the service pod. According to Space 1999 tech manuals, these windows are viewports for the passenger pod. Otherwise, they represent solar panels for the other service pod options. However, I'll just refer to them as viewports. As with the command module viewports, automotive window tint is used to decorate the glass. The Eagle can carry a variety of payloads and the kit provides the more common service pod type seen on the TV series. Depending on how you choose to paint this service compartment dictates the mission specific variant configuration of your Eagle. Before making any rash decision, I think we should evaluate where we are and what we're going to do. I like the rescue pod version which is adorned with the alternating red and white striping as seen on the box cover. Many rescue pod missions were conducted using Eagle 4 on the TV show so that is why the number 4 decal was chosen for the command module door. This selection will pose a few challenges in creating those red and white bands. There's another choice though. What's that? There are conflicting images from the show of this unit. Pause the video here if you wish to see the incongruities noted on the slide in more detail. Less white paint was applied to the bottom here to simulate a dirtier and harder to reach space. Initially it would seem making masking tape strips the width of 22.2 millimeters would work, but the detail on the pod causes the masking tape to twist, and even with a slightly penciled in line to stay true, the deformation of the tape adds up as it is placed and is difficult to correct. Using smaller pieces of tape were found to be more functional instead. An optical illusion occurred making it look as if the prep work was not as it should be, though repeated measurements of everything demonstrated all was accurate. Trust your instruments.
After our red color bands are applied, we can remove our mask and evaluate our results. Everything will still look somewhat plain, but we still have the weathering powder patterns, wash, and decals to add and further transform our plastic box into something acceptable. In addition to the powders we used earlier, the black soot powder is also used on some areas where the red bars are concerned to further imitate the TV Eagle models. The detail on the front and back will be lost once this rescue pod is mated to the main structure of the craft. The spacing is somewhat tight between it and the service and engineering modules and only a close up looks might you be able to see these areas. However, if you take advantage of the ability to remove and reattach your service pod, then the forward and aft facing detail comes more into play. There are the main engine nozzles and two sets of vertical takeoff and landing nozzles for a grand total of 12 nozzles which we will focus on, all with the same approach. When attaching the main engine nozzles to the reactors, the semicircles inside the engine bells should be oriented so that they form a cross. With the add-ons to the rescue pod completed, we have all our sections ready for the finale of construction. After everything we've seen so far, I'm afraid of where we'll end up next. 
We'll start with the main supporting truss work attachment to the service and engineering module assemblies. Then the tight fit of the service pod. I don't intend for this rescue pod to be removed unless a problem arises, but the two provided screws are utilized for the connecting of it to the Eagle's framework spine. It would be easier to add the landing gear to their respective pods prior to the pod insertions into the main body, but it was elected to add the gear later. After temporarily masking off all the glass pieces and a few airbrushing touch-ups, we can add our flat coat outside on a nice, very sunny day. We're just about done and ready to put our Eagle out onto a lunar launch pad for a vital Moonbase Alpha mission. Take care, and we'll see you later.